to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, I chat with and showcase small business owners. We discuss their journeys, their stories, their perspectives. And with me today is Tracy Davis, the founder and owner of Bad Cat Coffee Company. Bad Cat Coffee has a physical location here in Raleigh, North Carolina. They are located in the Morgan Street Food Hall, so if you're around, be sure to check them out. They also sell their coffee and other merchandise online and are able to ship it to you. Now, Tracy started her business a little later in life, and in this episode, she shares her journey to running a very successful business and how she got there um, and her advice for other small business owners. Now, before we hear from Tracy, I'd of course appreciate if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcast app and on Spotify. Really helps others discover us and just gets uh, these episodes out there and continues to support the small businesses that we feature. You can also follow us on social medias, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, etc. It's all at Virtual Coffee Podcast. As always, thank you so much for listening and supporting this podcast as well as our small businesses that we have on the show. I hope you all have an amazing week. And again, thank you for listening. Now let's hear from Tracy. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much for being on Virtual Coffee today. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Meow. (laughs) <laughs> yes, on brand already. I love it. Um, so introduce our audience to Bad Cat Coffee Company. Introduce us to the business, maybe how you got started with it, and then we'll go from there. Well, I am a late bloomer. I am in my 50s. I won't say how far into my 50s, <laughs> but when I was just a little bit into my 40s, I decided to finish up my bachelor's degree and went back to school as a middle-aged lady and I majored in business. And once I got out, I decided I was going to make jewelry, handcrafted jewelry. And guess what? Everybody else was making handcrafted jewelry. And it was so hard to get into shows. And I said, well, if I'm going to start a a shop where all these handcrafted items are going to be, how do I make sure that people come often to look at all the handcrafted stuff? Because the business model I was looking at always failed. And I said, it's it's just not going to work. And I said, well, maybe I could put a little coffee bar in there. That means everybody will be in there every day. So I said, that will make the jewelry and the handcrafted items just sell like crazy. So I started at our local flea market, the Raleigh flea market, Mm -hmm. and I just opened up a little table. I was selling cold brew and pour over coffees and got some coffee from my local roaster. And you know what? Within six months, I had upgraded to a full-size booth that was inside the flea market uh, in a permanent booth. And I had no time whatsoever to make jewelry. And suddenly (laughs) I'm in the coffee business and I named it after my cat, Bad Cat Patches. (laughs) That is an incredible story. What a way to embrace the experimentation and evolution of a product, right? You go into it for jewelry and you come out of it with coffee. That's amazing. And I thought I was so happy sitting in my little studio making jewelry, Mm -hmm. you know, for hours and hours and hours. But when I got out in front of everybody and, you know, just serving coffee, having, making friends, laughing, having fun, it was my social time. And I said, you know what? I can't stand to be in that little room anymore. I want to be out here with people. So it, it actually matched my personality much more than what I originally planned. That's wonderful. And yeah, you found your passion and what fits with you. What is your favorite part about running a coffee company? What is the part that really vibes with you or, you know, maybe even something that you didn't expect to like? What comes to mind there? Well, I always thought I was an independent person that Mm -hmm. could just do things by myself. I was always the one, if it was meant to be, it's up to me. And now that I have employees, I just love working with other people. I've hired a lot of people that are creatives, that are very much people, people like me, uh, that love to be, you know, we've got a lot of extroverts in the coffee business. I don't know if you've heard that, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but we're here, we're, we're just having fun all the time. Yeah. And I'm working with, uh, you know, just people from my diverse background. And I love it. I love working with my employees. They, they keep me current. They keep me on my toes. And they're constantly striving, making me strive to be better. That's wonderful. And I can hear the passion in your voice and, and how excited you are just to 
be running this company and and be a part of it. It's it's wonderful to hear. You can you can hear it in your voice. Well, you also hear about you know forty ounces of coffee in my voice too. <laughs> <laughs> I am That's passionate, awesome. but I'm also heavily caffeinated. That's amazing. That's also awesome. very fair. I I love that. <laughs> Would love to dive into advice or perspectives to share or stories to share, specifically for those who might be a little bit older. Like, I'm so happy to have you on this podcast because I think perhaps when society thinks of starting a business, like you need to do that in your 20s, it's hustle, hustle, hustle. You can't possibly do it once, you know, you're a little bit older and have a house and perhaps a family and other things going on. What would you like to share to yeah though that audience who might be a little bit older and and wants to start a business? Yes, you're absolutely right about that. Had I started this in my uh, mid twenties or even my early thirties, I would have failed. I mm-hmm. had you know small children at the time. My husband was in the navy. We were traveling all over the place. I didn't even have the the mental capacity to handle one mm-hmm. more thing. And it was just crazy. Once my kids went to college and I went back to college, we had three people in college at the same time. My husband (laughs) was going nuts. But but once my kids were off, I suddenly had some bandwidth to actually say, well, what do I want to do now? Mm -hmm. I've, I've been living for everyone else. I've been the support role for everyone else. Now, what do I want to do? And it it was a time to just be able to line up my priorities, see what I wanted to do and see where it took me. So, you know, you've got a house already. You've got to make sure that payment is, is coming in so that you don't lose the house. You don't want to start a business where if you go under, you lose the house. You know, so those are all very, because, you know, you've worked so long, once you're into your 50s or 40s, you, you know, you've got your house almost paid off and you right. don't want to lose that investment. So uh, you have to be able to organize your business in the correct way legally to protect your assets and not to take on a lot of debt because uh, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to get a business loan and I'll just go right to it. But that's really not the way to start a small business in my mind because you're putting your assets at risk. I believe in bootstrapping, starting out small, because as you start out small, you can configure your business so that it will succeed. Uh, If you just start out with all the money in your hand and you say, this is the way it's going to go. I mean, just like if I had started out full force in my jewelry business, it would have failed and I would have lost all that money. So when you're lean and you're bootstrapping, you're able to be a little more flexible in which direction you go and see what kind of opportunities fall into your lap. Because I can look at much of what I've done in this business has fallen into my lap. And I go, Mm -hmm. I've never thought of that. Let's try that. And that's where I'm at at the food hall right now. I never thought about being in this food hall uh, Mm -hmm. with our brick and mortar. Uh, It's actually a kiosk. I I call it my brick and mortar, but it is a (laughs) small eight by eight kiosk. But I never even thought about it until a guy wanted to sell it. And he contacted me and I was like, well, that does sound like a great idea. Let's try it. Yeah, a lot of great advice in there that applies to really anyone wanting to start a business or running a business. And yeah, really appreciate that mindset of, starting small and also keeping your mindset open, right? It's important to have that plan, of course, and goals and understand where you want to take your business. But to your point as well, staying open because you never know what opportunities are going to come. You never know what doors are going to open. And if you stick so strictly to your plan, perhaps you're almost blinded by those other opportunities that might come. That's absolutely right. If I had been stuck in like a, you know, three to $4,000 a month brick and mortar at the Mm -hmm. time, I wouldn't have found out what really worked. Right. Yeah. And for our uh, Raleigh audience, where exactly are you located? Well, we're located at 411 West Morgan Street in the Morgan Street Food Hall. It's in the warehouse district of Raleigh, North Carolina. Excellent. And of course, if people aren't aware, a lot of people think Charlotte, North Carolina is the capital of, of North Carolina, but it's not. It's Raleigh, North Carolina. We're slightly smaller than Charlotte, but we're more dynamic and we're such, my husband calls it Mayberry. <laughs> <laughs> we're just small enough to still have charm. Yes. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. I hope our Raleigh audience can uh, stop by and, and taste your coffee. And I saw you sell your coffee online. Are you able to ship it outside of the Raleigh area? 
I sure am. We're registered with the FDA. We are in the the process of starting a roastery, which is oh, really exciting, cool. but we're, you know, working on permits and all that, but we can still ship it out. We uh, use a local roaster right now. And so we're shipping it out a lot of it right now for Christmas. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we have to charge shipping because we're a small company, but it's worth it because people love the coffee and it's reasonably priced when you look at some other coffees out there. Yeah. How neat. That's great. I'm glad you're able to reach, you know, beyond the immediate Raleigh area. That's really exciting. Yes. Well, you know, being that we're cat themed, people find us on the internet or word of mouth or through our social media. Right. And they love coffee. They love cats. So they, they want to have a bag of our coffee or one of our t-shirts. And, uh, So we get people who have never been to our little kiosk here in Raleigh that just say, I've got to have a bag of coffee. Send me a T-shirt with it. Right. Yeah. No, that's great. I I love that expansion. And I saw, you know, that one YouTuber, uh, Safia, who I watch a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, She shouted you guys out with her, you know, their mug of the day segment, which I thought was so neat. That is awesome. (laughs) Well, you know, and uh, that that was pretty much by happenstance. They happened to be neighbors to the food hall. I didn't know. I didn't know who they were. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my, like I say, my employees keep me hip. They said, do you know who that is? Yeah. <laughs> no, that is so exciting. I saw that just watching her video like I normally do. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that, I'm going to I'm going to talk to Tracy. And that's amazing. <laughs> that's yeah, so they're, they're very nice people. They yeah. really are. And uh, we've been following their uh, YouTube Um, Mm -hmm. programs. And uh, we just, we love watching them, especially their Tuesday live uh, events. That's just so exciting when things like that happen. And I I think that, you know, has contributed to your passion and just going back to your mission and why you started the business and the energy you bring to it and how you just, you just keep going and you just want to bring, keep bringing coffee to, to the area. Oh, I do. I love, I love coffee. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And speaking of your coffee, can you, describe it or, you know, for those who might want to stop into your shop, what can they expect? Maybe the atmosphere, just paint us a slight picture, get, get us intrigued to, to come into your shop. Well, when you step in the front doors of the Morgan street food hall, the first thing you see right now, because it's Christmas, you see a giant bumble snowman from Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, <laughs> but right beside it is a giant life-size man-size cat with our, our bad cat t-shirt on there. It's a big head. And then we have cat stuff all around our little eight by eight kiosk. We sell, uh, of course, coffee, lattes, cold brew, but we also serve bagel sandwiches and we make fresh made to order crepes. So uh, we're like only one of three places in the whole triangle area of North Carolina that have crepes and we're the most reasonably priced and it's easy to get to us. But the most popular drink that we serve is called the caramel meow (laughs) chiato, followed by the calico kitty mocha, which is chocolate, white chocolate and caramel. And one of the most uh, popular coming up, it's 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 starting to to overtake some of our other drinks, is the purple purr. It's Ooh. lavender and honey with the espresso. And most people like to have oat milk or almond milk with mm-hmm. it because it just seems to balance the lavender and the uh, honey together. Yum. That sounds delicious. Is it actually, does it, is it purple in color? Well, if you do almond milk, it has a slight purple tinge. Okay. And of course, the lavender syrup that we use is purplish too. But once mm-hmm. you put the coffee in there, it's only like a hint of purple. So it's not yeah. too purple. Got it. I just got it. I don't think people would drink it if it was really, <laughs> yeah. you know, like purple cow color. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, just just the nice hint of purple that, that makes it uh, look a little different. That's awesome. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And, you know, you shared a little bit about your journey to launching Bad Cat Coffee Company. Any other major milestones or challenges you face that you want to share or that come top of mind that you think could help others who are launching their business, running their business, you know, any, any unexpected challenges that you were able to overcome or additional advice? Well, yes. I mean, the biggest challenge, and I think I am not alone in this challenge. I think everyone listening will agree that the pandemic has been a huge hit 
personally, financially, and business uh, wise, uh, it has just been something like we've never imagined to have the whole world shut down for periods of time and restricted access to your business. But, uh, you know, we just kept plugging along. We, we had to lay off everyone for a two month closure of the bad cat and the food hall back in 2020, uh, March of 2020. And that was devastating to us. Uh, But because we didn't carry debt at the time, because we were lean, we were able to survive that. We did uh, get some disaster relief money from the government that Mm -hmm. definitely helped us, you know, keeping as a business, keep all your paperwork up to date, all your figures, do your paperwork weekly, keep all that information together. So if this ever happens, again, or, you know, anything like it ever happens, and you need to access disaster relief funds or get a loan or a personal loan or something, you have access to your figures, because that's what allowed me to get in there and and apply right away for those emergency funds. And that kept us going when we had nothing coming in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was very important. And, you know, we reevaluated every single thing. Once we were reopened at reduced capacity, according to guidelines in our area, we just reevaluated everything. What's the best price on this? What's mm-hmm. the best price on that? How do we make this crepe better? How do we make this, you know, where that was quality, where that was price? Uh, how do we schedule people so that they're happier? We went through everything because we had the time. And, uh, you know, you won't always have that. But uh, now I find that I have to take the time to make these decisions, because if you think about these decisions and make good decisions, it's going to help everyone from you to your staff to your customers. Mm -hmm. So you have to reevaluate everything very often so that you can keep your business moving forward. No, I appreciate that business specific advice with, you know, keeping your paperwork up to date and and really all your all your ducks in a row. And then also continuing to evolve with the times. I mean, pandemic or not, trends consistently change as time goes on, as the years go on, and not Mm -hmm. being afraid to adjust, as you're saying, change your prices, change your products, and just keep evolving um, while staying true to the essence and the core of your business, but continuing to evolve as as the times change. And you know, that's something I tell my employees too uh, about evolving. Hey, this is how we do it now, but if you have a better way of doing it, I need to be the first one to hear about it because it's likely our new best way to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And most of our best ideas in our business have come from our employees. Hands down. Yeah. And I mean, embracing the the community as well. Yeah. Whether it's your employees, your customers, your audience, just Mm -hmm. taking all that, all that info in and, and experimenting with it. Oh, yeah. exactly. I, I still always say that my business is not a business. It's a, it's a laboratory. <laughs> mm, yes, I love that. I think that's a great mindset to have because you're not getting stuck in the original idea from XYZ time ago. It's it's mm-hmm. that idea that's been evolved and, and continuing to improve and, and get better and scale and grow. Exactly. Now I just have to work on the scale part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of of the future, where are you hoping to take Bad Cat Coffee Company? Any future milestones, goals that you want to share? Yes. Well, the first one is the roastery that we're working on. Mm-hmm. We hope to produce our own beans moving forward. Uh, once that's up, the place where we have our roastery near the Angus Barn on US 70 uh, in Raleigh, it's in Northwest Raleigh. Uh, we're going to open that up as a, a roast, you know, a roastery where people can tour if they want mm-hmm. to, but also so they can come in and buy the beans, buy some swag, and also buy a cup of coffee or pick up a cup of coffee on their way out to work in the morning. So that's the next step. And then I have some family members that want to open a a bad cat coffee shop down in Wilmington, North Carolina. So Ah. that's second on the list. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have a few things in the fire is our irons in the fire as well that we hope to kind of expand. Uh, My son has come on to work with us. He, my adult son, he's been working in some other uh, areas, but he came to me with the idea of opening the roastery. So he'll be our our master roaster. And then also he's helping us with business development. So uh, it's now a family business and it's, uh, it's really exciting to work with my son. He's, he's smarter than I ever gave him credit for. (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. That's so exciting. Yay for all those plans. And I look forward to following along your journey on, on social media and whatnot, but that's very exciting. Yay. Yay for growth. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, we're, we're excited. I want to leave behind a legacy. I've, yeah. I've got to hurry up because my retirement <laughs> age is slipping up on me quickly. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And yeah, speaking of your, your future, it sounds like you're all in for bad cat coffee or oh, yes. do you see yourself going into other business ventures or it's really the coffee shop? Well, it's really the coffee shop. And, you know, I started out wanting to open a shop where we sell handcrafted items. Mm -hmm. I no longer have time to do that, but I like to support other makers and artists. So, uh, you know, I always buy local if I can. Yep. So moving forward, once we open more brick and mortar shops, I hope to incorporate uh, handmade artwork and uh, items from local people as well. Right. So uh, it's sort of an expansion of the concept, but going back to the roots of where it used to be. But, you know, it's it's always something because I love supporting people who are creatives. No, I love that vision. Really sounds like creating that one stop shop for like local supporting local and, and mm -hmm. shopping with your within your community. Yes, exactly. Because I, you know, when it's time for Christmas shopping or birthday shopping, I always go to someone who makes something first. Yeah, I mean, I can totally relate to that. That's my exact mission with with this podcast. So I, I love to hear that. Yeah, I love your podcast. It's wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, you know, with running a business, having a family, I'm sure other hobbies and, and passions in life, any advice for trying to balance all that and not just working on your business 24-7? I'm sure that's it gets addicting and that you want to mm -hmm. keep just working on the business. But how do you take time for yourself, your family? Any advice there? Well, I'll tell you something right now. I have come to uh, love is the midday soak. Mm -hmm. I, if I have a day off or an afternoon off, I will jump in the bathtub for 20 minutes and soak. And that's where I collect my thoughts. And it just, you know, helps all the sore muscles and everything. And that is like uh, the ultimate pleasure for me in life right there. If I could get that midday soak, I just feel like a million bucks. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't mean all green and wrinkled, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is great. And, and that's just, it's, it's just a small luxury and I love that. And, you know, you just have to have a few small luxuries in your life at the very least, even if it's going for pizza once a week or whatever. But, um, you know, time management is very important. I've always been terrible with time management. My husband keeps me very accountable to that. He'll give me a 30 minute warning when I say I'm, I'm about re when I should be leaving the shop for the day mm -hmm. or something. He says, how's everything going? <laughs> and that's my little cue. Like, you need yeah. to be thinking about when you're going to leave because right. I can get caught up and I can get caught up and I stay and I stay and it's very difficult for me to just step away. So, mm -hmm. you know, he holds me accountable because he knows I need to be held accountable to that mm -hmm. because that's a weak spot for me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I actually had an injury in October. I actually fell down some stairs oh. and I, I twisted my ankle pretty badly. It didn't mm -hmm. break it luckily, but I was basically off my feet and couldn't work in the shop for a month. And that told me, and, and the shop even did better financially than it did the month before when I was there all the time. Mm -hmm. So this showed me that my employees are fantastic. They can do it without me. And if I need to take time, I need to let them be their best and do the job. Right. <laughs> so uh, that taught me a lot. So I've been taking more days off and it's, it's benefited my mental health, my physical health and uh, my relationships with my family as well. Yeah, that's a great perspective. It, it shows that if you put in the work at the beginning and build this community, this business, that can thrive when you need to step away. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, still needs your expertise and vision and guidance. But from time to time, you can take a day right to yourself yes. and, and the business will still run successfully because of what you built at the beginning. Exactly. And, you know, uh, it gives my employees as well a, a greater sense of responsibility mm -hmm. and ownership of their job. And I think they perform better because they're like, hey, I, I'm in charge here. I'm doing this. This is me. Uh, I am really working hard and uh, I'm going to show her how how good we can be without her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that is a great leadership mindset. That's what makes a great leader, in my opinion. So oh, well, I, I love you. that. Yeah. yeah, I need to step away more, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, giving the time, allowing yourself to recharge too, right? Yes. In my opinion, that is a benefit to the business too, because then you can come back refreshed with perhaps brighter, clearer ideas and concepts than you would if you're burnt out or tired. 
Exactly. And I have been burnt out over the last five years mm-hmm. and uh, it, it it's not a very pleasant me. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I think everyone can relate to that for sure. I wanted to go back to you going to school and see if you had, you know, were there things that you felt you learned while getting your degree specifically in, in business that you wouldn't have learned just doing it on your own without that degree? Like what's your, what's your perspective on that? If people are considering going back to school, I say going back to school is 100% worth it. If your mind and heart are in it, Mm -hmm. if you're just going to school to please someone else, forget it. Don't do it. Go back for you. Go back to learn go back to show that you can reach a goal and to prove to yourself something. Cause that's why I went back and I said, I know I don't know enough about business. And I had some, I had four years of college before I went back to finish my degree. And uh, a lot of it was in finance and business. And so I had a lot of accounting and finance information already, but putting it all together under a business header was uh, more advantageous for me and my goals. So, I mean, I learned so much and I went to a smaller private college here in North Carolina called Campbell University. Mm -hmm. And I went to one of their satellite campuses here in Raleigh and we had small classes. I had some online classes, but most of it was in person. I had professors that were heavily invested in making sure that we learned, not Mm -hmm. just jump through hoops. And I think uh, it was the best thing for me rather than being in a stadium type university setting Mm -hmm. uh, where you take a class with, you know, 150 people, which I had done before as well. So I went back uh, under the right circumstances for me and to learn. And uh, it was 100 percent the right thing to do for me. And so I would highly recommend it if under the similar circumstances for someone else. I'm very happy you didn't give just a blanket like yes, go or no, don't go answer because I find some people do say, oh, it's not worth it to go back for, you know, a business degree or MBA. And some people say, yes, definitely go. But what I appreciate about your answer is do it for yourself. And everyone Mm -hmm. learns differently. Everyone's at a different stage of life. Everyone has different goals and Take a look at what you want. And if that lines up and that's the right next step for you, then of course, go for it. I, I'm sure that person would benefit from it. So, yeah, I just I, I really appreciate that that perspective. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I'm i one of those people, too, that I, I really insisted that my my two sons go to college mm-hmm. right when they got out of school. But, you know, I've actually changed my mind on that. Yeah. Uh, I think if given a, 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 an opportunity to go back in time, I would say, Yes, I'll pay for your bachelor's if you want to go to school. Mm -hmm. If you want to go to a trade school, yes, go to a trade school. If you want to go into business or whatever they wanted to do, I would support them in that way as long as they had a clear plan for what they wanted to do. So, uh, you know, I think given that, I probably wouldn't have pushed them as hard as I did. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, I appreciate the, the change in mindset based on your experience, but I'm also sure going to school benefited them as well. <laughs> it did. I have, yeah. I have a doctor and a roaster now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like some two pretty good outcomes. <laughs> yes, they did. They did very well for themselves. Right. Excellent. Awesome. Well, Tracy, the question I end all my episodes with is in this moment, what is your proudest accomplishment? And I know that's a very big question, but really going for the first thing that pops into your mind when I ask you what your proudest accomplishment is. Well, so far it's raising two wonderful boys and you're bringing tears to my eyes. Oh. <laughs> and then of course, second is my marriage. I have a mm-hmm. wonderful husband and then the bad cat business. All excellent accomplishments. And I just really appreciate you sharing your story and life experience here on this podcast. I think it's really going to val- bring value to a lot of people listening. And thank you so much for all that you do for our community, Tracy. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for what you do. This is a very interesting concept and I just love it. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. And before we sign off here, where can people find you and Bad Cat Coffee Company? I know you already gave your physical location, but any social medias, websites that you want to shout out? Oh, yes. We're badcatcoffee.com. On Facebook and Instagram, we're at Bad Cat Coffee Company, all spelled out. And of course, here at the Morgan Street Food Hall in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, this was such an uplifting conversation. And again, Tracy, thank you so much for being on Virtual Coffee. Thank you so much. You take care now. Yeah, you too. 